Hey guys, it's Steve here, and after doing some experimenting in Blender, I found some really cool methods for creating some realistic rain effects, not only creating and simulating a raindrop falling, but also rain hitting a surface, splashing, leaving ripples, and even wetness on that surface. So it's a really cool method, and I actually shared my finished result from this a few weeks ago on Twitter, and a lot of you guys thought it looked photorealistic and were convinced that maybe it was a video clip. So I'm really excited to share my secrets with you guys today, and I hope you guys find this video very easy and helpful. You wonder what else is super easy and helpful? This video sponsor, Dashlane. With Dashlane, you can securely store and manage all of your passwords from one place, keeping them safe and making it super quick and easy to log in anywhere from any platform or device. It will also autofill password and credit card information with just one click. Being a creator myself, I have many different accounts online, so using a password manager like this will make my life really easy and worry-free. Dashlane also has a great app for iOS or Android with over a million downloads and a 4.6 rating on the Google Play Store. And the best part of it all is, it's it's completely free to use. They do offer a premium version if you'd like that comes with no limitations and a VPN service that allows for safe and secure online web browsing. So go ahead and download Dashlane free using the link in the description below and enjoy premium for 30 days. Plus, if you want to continue using premium, you can save 10% using the coupon code CGGeek at checkout. All right, so I hope you guys are excited now to start simulating some raindrops and splash effects all within Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm using the beta version of Blender 2.8. Once we have the new Intel denoiser, and as I said, this effect could be used on any surface. You could use it on the default cube, or you could even use it on the Suzanne monkey head. But today we're gonna be using it on a flat road. So I'm gonna enable the images as planes add-on in the preferences, as well as the node regular add-on in the preferences. So go ahead and enable both of those, and then download the road texture you want from CG Bookcase. There'll be a link in the description. I used a nice wet one that has some cracks in it. So once you've downloaded your textures, go ahead and hit shift a and add in that image we're just going to add in the base color material and then all you have to do is rotate it 90 degrees along the y rotate 90 degrees along the z and then scale it up by five by hitting s and five now i'm going to switch to my look dev here so you can see what that texture is looking like and it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and add the rest of those PBR materials to finish off this material. So opening up the shader editor here, I'm just gonna disconnect the color from being connected to the alpha and add in another texture for the roughness. This is just going to be set to non-color data and connected to the roughness on our PBR shader. Do it again for the normal map, again, changing it to non-color data and adding in a normal map node. Connect it to the normal map node and connect this up to your PBR material and already you can see, it's looking pretty amazing. Now I'm just gonna duplicate one of those image textures one more time, this time opening up the AO texture and connecting that with a multiply node to our base color. Plugging it in the bottom, you can see that this just adds some depth and darkness to those cracks. Now we need a raindrop, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go shift A and add in an ICO sphere. Then going into edit mode and grabbing that top vertex, I'm going to pull it up using proportional editing. So hit O to enable proportional editing and then choose a sharp fall off. Here you can see I can just pull it up now and make it sort of look like a drop. Scaling it down to a nice little skinny raindrop and then right clicking and choosing smooth shading on that object. Now we need a very simple material for this raindrop. So I'm just going to delete the default principal shader and add in a glass shader. This I'm going to change to an IOR value of 1.33 no roughness, and then just connect that to your material output. And that's gonna be it for the material on our raindrop. Now we need something to emit our rain. So I'm just going to duplicate our road texture here, pulling it up along the Z axis, and we're gonna use this to add in our particle system. So just jumping over to the particle systems tab and adding a new particle system, I'm gonna go down to render and choose render as an object. And for that object, we're gonna use that icosphere that we just created as our raindrop. You can see here, if I play it back now, we already have rain falling from the sky, woohoo! By default, under the velocity settings is set to one, change this to zero or even negative one to kind of shoot the rain downwards instead of shooting it up a little bit. And then go ahead and make the lifetime last 250 frames or as long as you want your animation to last. I'm just going to move this plane up a little bit higher so the raindrops are actually falling a little bit faster. Basically, the higher the plane, the faster the rain is going to fall as gravity starts to take effect. And then I'm just gonna change the lifetime of these particles to something like 36 or 37. So the particles are already hitting the road, but once they're past the road, they can die and not be needed anymore. Give it a little bit of random scale to make those particles look a little bit different. And now let's crank that up to about 100,000 particles for a downpour. So now you can see we have a complete crazy downpour, but is it enough? No, 
we could have even more rain. Make it 200,000. Woohoo! So now that we're raining cats and dogs, go ahead and bake that simulation in the cache tab. Just save your project and then click bake. And then you don't have to touch the rain at all for the rest of the video. And now that we have our downpour baked, it's time to start adding some of those effects to our road. So I'm going to the physics tab and enabling dynamic paint on our road and adding in a new canvas. Now I'm going to grab our particles and go to physics again and enable dynamic paint. But this time, this is going to be a brush. Add a brush, and then under the source, choose the particle system and the particle settings that we just created. Under the effect size of these particles, we want it to be very small. So make it like a 0 0.02. And then for the smooth radius, we don't want any smooth radius, so make it zero. So then selecting the canvas, we're going to change our format from vertex to image sequence. We can give this a resolution of about 1024. Give it a few sub steps to make that animation a little bit smoother. And then scrolling down, all we have to do is give it a little bit of initial color. We want it to be black before it gets painted by our rain. So go ahead and make this color black under initial color. And then uncheck dry, and we're going to enable shrink. For this, we want to choose a speed of something pretty small, like a 0.6. This will allow our particles to hit make a spot and then shrink very quickly after a few frames. So now all we have to do is make an output folder for this image sequence. So make a new folder, call it something like splash and choose that as the output. Choose that UV map under the output settings. Now jumping back to our particles, we're going to change the paint color from blue to white. So we have this affecting our canvas with a bit of white paint. This is going to be used in the material editor to give us some really cool effects. So with all that set up, we can go ahead and bake the image sequence. So as that image sequence is baking, you can see in that folder that you created on your hard drive, you have all of the images being saved out. And if I jump to this here, you can see that we have all of those particles appearing as they hit the canvas in a white paint and then shrinking after a few frames to nothing. This is exactly what we need. So now we're going to make another image sequence, and this is going to be for the wet map. So go ahead and make a new folder, call this one something like wet and choose that one as the output folder. Then we're gonna uncheck paint maps and choose wet maps. We're gonna disable shrink and enable spread. For the spread, we're gonna change this to a speed of something pretty small, like a 0 0.06. So we want to spread very slowly. And then we're gonna go ahead and enable dry. And for this, we're gonna choose a time of about 140 or 150. This is how many frames it takes for that paint to disappear into nothing. So this is gonna be used, like I said, for the wet map. So you can go ahead and bake this image sequence now. And again, as this saves out, you can see what these are looking like. And again, it's similar to the other particles, except instead of disappearing, they're slowly expanding and dissolving. And this is gonna be how we affect the wetness on our road. Now we need one more image sequence saved out. So for this, we need to create a new surface. So create a new surface and disable that first surface. Go ahead and name it something like Displace. And for the format, we're gonna choose image sequence again, resolution 1024 again, give it a few subframes again, and then we're going to change it from a surface type from paint over to waves. For this, we're gonna choose open borders and just change a few of these settings. So for the time scale, I'm gonna make it a little bit slower by going a 0.8, and then for the speed, I'm gonna make it much slower by going down to about a 0.3. The only other thing we're gonna to have to change then is the smoothness. I like to take this down to about a 0.3 as well. Okay, so now going down, we're going to change the file format from PNG to OpenEXR, as this will give us a little bit more data for our displacement maps. Create a new folder, name it something like Waves, and choose that as the output, and you're ready to bake your displacement maps. So go ahead and choose Bake, and as you can see, these are saving out as well. For the waves, you don't really get anything to look at as the image sequence, as this is more data that's not really visible to the eye, but you can see the file size is there, so it does contain that data that we want. So now we're all done baking, it's time to add these image sequences to our road material. So creating a new tab here again and switching to the shader editor, we're gonna start off by going Shift A and adding a new image sequence. And for this image sequence, we're gonna open up that first image sequence, the splash. Hit A and click Import Image Sequence. Go ahead and choose Cycle and Auto Refresh, and everything else is already ready to go. So now we're just gonna add in a mix shader, change it to add, and connect your image sequence to the bottom socket over the color output. You can see that this allows us to have those wet points added to our color material, and they change as the water droplets hit. Super cool, you can even use a color ramp here to kind of adjust how much white is visible. Now we can add wetness to our material by adding in another image sequence, this time choosing the wet image sequence. Again, hitting A and importing all of those images. Dropping this down by our roughness texture, we're going to first need to invert this texture. So it's black instead of white. So go ahead and add in an invert node and then another color mix, change it to multiply and connect the inverted color 
to the bottom socket of that multiply node. You can now see if we control shift click on the roughness map, we have those spots showing up on that roughness texture. And this is going to add the wetness effect now to our material. So you can see there, we have some wet showing up where those raindrops are hitting. Now I'm gonna duplicate that multiply node up to our base color. And I'm gonna take the inverted image sequence again and connect it to the bottom socket. This will just add a bit of darker color everywhere that water hits the road. So now it's time to add that last image sequence, the displace. So go ahead and shift A image sequence and choose the waves. Go ahead and hit A and import all of these. Now we're gonna add in a new vector bump node. Drop this in after the normal map node and connect this to the height input. This will allow it to displace the road using that wave texture. And right off the bat, you can see we have those wave ripples added to our road and it looks really cool. You might wanna take the strength down just a little bit, but at this point, you can now go ahead and play back your animation in the viewport and see it working in real time using Eevee. You can see we have those little splashes, that wetness, those ripples, and it looks really cool. For distant shots, this might be all you need to do to get a very cool looking finished rain effect. But we're gonna take it to a whole nother level by adding actual splashes everywhere those raindrops hit the road. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a default cube and we're gonna simulate a little splash. So with that default cube, I'm just gonna jump over to wireframe mode and at the top of the default cube, I'm gonna add in an icosphere. We'll scale this down real small to be our water droplet and make sure it's inside of that default cube. Then I'm just gonna grab that cube, duplicate it and scale it down a very little bit and then scale it down along the Z axis. Placing this at the bottom of our cube, this is going to be the fluid inside of our domain object. So grabbing that base cube, I'm going to go over to the physics settings and choose fluid and then choose a type of domain. Then I'm going to grab that cube that we added at the bottom, choose fluid for this type is going to be fluid. And then for that icosphere again, fluid and choose fluid for it. Now we want the fluid to be falling to the ground very quickly. So along the Z axis in the velocity, give it about a negative 10 and this will cause it to fall very fast. So now we just have a few domain settings to change. First of all, the final resolution I went with is a hundred and then you can change the speed to something like 0.5. So you have even more frames here to choose from for rendering. Now I'm just going to add two subdivisions under the boundary and then give it a 0.2 under the particle generation to give it some particles in that splash. With that set up though, all you have to do is go start baking and you're gonna have your simulation ready to render. And after a few minutes, you can stop it because we already have that splash and that's all we need to render out. So I'm just gonna choose smooth shading on that. We're gonna set up our camera to be along the side of that splash. So just setting your viewport there and going control alt zero, we'll snap it to your viewport. Now you can go ahead and position that camera right along with the splash at the very bottom. We don't want any of the water visible, just the water splash. So I'm gonna grab the two objects that I don't want rendered, the icosphere, go to the object info and under visibility, uncheck show and renders same with that fluid along the bottom uncheck show and renders now for our main fluid object we're going to give it that same basic material of a glass shader with an IOR value of 1.33 and no roughness. This is gonna give us a material that looks like water. And then for the render engine, I'm switching over to cycles now from EV because we're getting serious and I'm changing the device to GPU compute and making sure that it's using that Titan RTX and the preferences under system for rendering. Now I'm switching over to rendered view and you can see we have some water being rendered, but it's not looking very cool because nothing's being reflected in it just yet. So jumping over to our environment settings, choose a new environment texture. And for that environment texture, I'm using the Shanghai HDR from HDR Haven, which is pretty much the coolest HDR ever. You can split your window, open up a shader editor now and switch it from object over to world. Here we can change the rotation of that environment texture by selecting it and hitting control T with the node Wrangler and add-on enabled. It'll add it in for us. And then just go ahead and change the rotation along the Z axis to something like 40. Then jump over to the render settings and under film, choose transparent as this will give us a nice transparent background for rendering and you're ready to render. So hit F12, let that render. Once the render finishes, go ahead and save it out as a PNG, naming it something like splash one. And you can actually repeat this process choosing a different frame in your simulation, rendering it out again and again, saving that image as another PNG for some variation. Now it's time to import those images right back into our file scene by using that import images as planes add-on and going shift A and adding the image and then choosing that splash that we just saved out. Here you can see we have the splash image back in our file scene. And I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and pull that image up. So the orange origin point is at the very bottom of our splash there. That's important to keep in mind. And once that's done, we can go ahead and change the scale this a little bit, scaling it up along the Z. So our splash kind of splashes up a little bit more. I thought that just looked kind of cool. Now we just have 
have a few quick material tweaks, changing the IOR on our principal shader to 1.33 and then taking the roughness down to about a 0.1. We're also gonna quick add in a mix shader here at the end of our node tree, adding in a transparent shader in the bottom socket and then setting it to something small like a 0.2 just to give a little bit of transparency to that splash. I also added in a hue saturation value to the color texture here and then crank the value up a bit higher just to give it a little bit more intensity. Now you can just go ahead and duplicate that splash image, jump to your materials tab and click that two to make it a separate material and then go ahead and open up that second image that you saved out as some variation. You can also change the scale of this to make it look a little bit different than your first splash and we're ready to add those splashes to our surface. So grabbing the road, we're gonna go over to our particle settings and create a new particle system. For this, we're gonna choose hair and advanced. And you can see we have all those hair strands rendering there. So I'm gonna jump back to our look dev and then also delete any lamps that might be in your scene as we only want the HDR light lighting this scene. But we don't want this road being hairy, we want it to be splashy. So I'm gonna go over and grab both of our splashes there and go control G and make a collection out of this. Name them something like raindrops. Now grab that road and we're gonna change the render as to collection and then the instance collection will be those raindrops. And you can see we have splashes all over our road. So this is pretty cool, but it's not landing in the right places yet and they're also kind of big. So make them smaller and give them a little bit of random scale as well. Now here's where the real magic happens. You're gonna scroll down in your particle settings to textures and click new texture. Then jumping over to the texture settings along the right bar there, you're gonna see we have a new texture added here. For that texture, we're gonna open up our image sequence splash, that one with all the little white dots that are disappearing, import that image sequence, and you can see that we have that image sequence opened up there. Choose cycle and auto refresh, just like we did in the material editor. And you can see that those particles are now changing when we change the viewport image. And then scrolling down under the mapping, you're gonna to wanna to change the coordinates to UV and then choose our UV map right there. And then the final step, which is the coolest part, is down under influence. You're gonna uncheck general time and you're gonna check density. Now this is going to allow those particles to appear everywhere there's a white dot. So you can see we only have one showing up right now. And that's because we don't have many particles on that particle system. So scrolling up, let's give this just as many particles as we gave it raindrops, something like 200,000. And now you can see we have raindrop splashes happening all over our road surface. Anywhere we have one of those white dots, there's going to be one of those splashes appearing at some point. So that's pretty cool. And if I switch to rendered view for cycles here, you can see we have a little bit of an issue with some alpha mapping. So jumping over to our render settings, you can go ahead and uncheck transparent now. And then under the light pass, you wanna change the transparency passes to be something like 64. And you can see that those splashes are all rendering nicely now. Now the one bummer right now is that currently this doesn't update on its own if you were to play it back in the viewport. You have to go to the texture settings here and force it to update by clicking the refresh button for every frame. It does do this when you render, maybe a bug, but kind of a bummer that we can't play it back in the viewport. Anyways, moving on, you can see that all of these particles are currently aligned flat and we wanna fix that. So jumping to our particle settings here, check rotation. And then under the orientation axis, choose normal, give it a different phase number and then give it some random phase. And this will just kind of spin them around and give them all sorts of different rotation, which when you render it here, will actually give them some sort of a 3D effect to those 2D planes, which looks really cool. Okay, so setting up a render now, uncheck show emitter for your rain particles and go ahead and add in another camera. This camera we're gonna position right inside of our raindrop, somewhere cool-like, give it a focal length of maybe 80 so you have some more depth of field. And speaking about depth of field, go ahead and enable depth of field. Let's give it a distance of something small, like a 1.8. And then let's give it some bokeh effect by giving it five blades under the aperture. And you can see if I jump over to a cycles render here, we have the bokeh effect rendering in the background. And again, it's really cool looking. You can see that our render is a little bit blown out. So jumping over to our environment settings, change the strength of that HDR to be something like a 0.25. And that looks much more moody and kind of cool. Maybe take the scale down on those rain droplets a little bit as they're a little bit oversized right now in my opinion. And under your color management settings, in the render settings, you can choose a high contrast look to give it again, sort of some cool color grading. Enable motion blur under the render settings as well. Change it to something like a 0.5 or 0.6 and hit render. Right off the bat, we have a really cool looking render, but there's a little bit of noise and we can fix that by jumping over to the compositing tab, choose use nodes and just add in the filter denoise. This is the new Intel denoiser in Blender 2.81 and it does a really good job of cleaning up all that little bit of noise that we were getting in the scene. 
and it looks pretty cool. This is rendered at a thousand samples, but you can render it at as many samples as you want. And I rendered out a few frames here so you guys can see what it looks like animated as I jump through these three frames. You can get those splash effects showing up all over the place and it was ripples on the road. So I hope you guys enjoyed this rain tutorial, more like a rain tutorial splash effects. As I said, you can put this rain on any sort of surface. So it'd be really cool to see what it looks like on a car or something. So if you guys created something cool, share it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hit a like. I'd again like to thank Dashlane for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys all in a future video tutorial. Bye-bye.